the, the upper limit at which um, the climate models predict temperature for 2100, in other words, at the end of this century, is about 5.8 or 6 degrees. But it's very interesting that if you put an interactive carbon cycle in those models, that actually goes up to between 6 and 7 degrees in a worst-case scenario. It is hard to envisage, in my view, a world that we can survive, well, a world in which our civilizations can survive. And it's hard for me to envisage a world that shows such a strong change in a major parameter of the Earth's system like mean temperature. You will actually experience a six or seven degree mean temperature in very different ways. It won't just be six degrees hotter. It will be very much hotter during extreme events. It'll possibly be very much drier in areas that are predicted to get drier. Um, we, we don't know how the ecology, how the biology of the planet is going to respond to that, but we know that it is not equipped to cope with such sharp and such drastic changes in temperature and in other aspects of the climate system and in other aspects of atmospheric composition. Uh, I would say that if we push the planet toward that five or six or seven degree change within a, a century, that's, that's, that's a catastrophe. That's a catastrophic rate of change. Thank you, Ian. Perhaps the most worrying problem is climate change. Climate change is one of the greatest threats we face today. Clearly, to me, this climate change issue is one of the principal challenges that we face. Global warming is too serious for the world any longer to ignore its danger. You have no kind of time mehr to verlieren. There is no time to lose. We must act. It's time to act now. We must act. Now is the time for action. Now is the time for action. The agreements that we have on climate change through Kyoto are not radical enough. We all know it's not enough. Uh, we're not talking about this small percentage reductions of emissions of less than 10%, which is what we've committed to right now, although still haven't moved ahead to do anything. We're talking about reductions of up to 70%. Um, that's a major change. It's a major transformation of society. It's going to be a major transformation of the way that we do things. It touches people's mobility. It touches lifestyles. Strongly touches consumption and production systems and uh, worldwide. <laughs> Very, very difficult to, to achieve. I think the biggest problem is that it lies outside the scale of our usual daily discourse. We can cope with small changes. We can cope with the idea that the price of milk might rise, with the idea that a building down the road might change its use. But the idea of the whole world changing, the idea of our position in the world changing, of, of us no longer being involved in this steady progress towards better and better conditions of life, but instead engineering a situation in which our conditions of life become much worse as a result of what we believe to be progress. That's something we just can't absorb. We can't take that in. It's too big.
the third biggest chunk of ice on the planet sits on top of the Himalayas. And you can see there's considerable melting going on here over this 30-some year period. Uh, the Chinese project that by 2050, two-thirds of the glaciers will be gone. In western China, about 300 million people rely in whole or in part on glacial meltwater during the summer to irrigate their crops and, and so on. Just what are they going to do? Now this is fossil water now. This water put down thousands of years ago. Yeah, they're not going to get it back in a year. They'll have to wait till the next ice age to do that. When they are gone, that is Asia's irrigation water gone. That is the water which feeds the Yangtze, the Yellow, the Mekong, the Ganges, the Indus, the Brahmaputra, all the major rivers of Asia, which in turn provide the water necessary for growing rice and the other irrigated crops. The disappearance of those glaciers alone is enough to throw the world into net food deficit. It's enough to cause a global humanitarian catastrophe. Here we are selling water at this point in the There are so many people coming here. So this just is a quite a large uh, area. Where they came from, they were using normally they were using the the, the rivers, from, the, the water from the rivers. But right now there's no water in the rivers. So the alternative is only this water. So this water will be providing them with their basic needs for for drinking and for use of the, the livestock and washing their clothes and so forth. If there's no water, the people will die because there's no water anyway. If you have continued with business as usual, you will see agricultural failures, you will see more conflict over water shortages, and essentially I think you'll start seeing a real breakdown of civilization into much more fractured, combative societies. Um, I think you'll see more and more competition among smaller groups that are increasingly divided and fragmented.